about that. Oh. It's pretty much the same as what we're hunting now. I know way back there was uh, over by where Ferndale, on the other side of Ferndale, there was elk. I heard there was elk living over there. And we used to take elk out of there. It was up into the in the late 1800s when the last elk was taken. I'm really early 1900s. The last elk was taken out of Lake Carroll area. Uh, we, elk, uh, deer, otter, beaver, rabbit. There's squirrels, uh, porcupine. I imagine there were some other small animals that were taken. Uh, basically, whatever showed, you know, whatever they caught. But, uh, I remember uh, Grandpa again. They talked about how they used to hunt at nighttime with the torches and stuff. The animals they and they have a torches on. The, they find the, find the deer in the woods. They move the torches back and forth. The younger people would be going like this back and forth, and the shadows would go like this back and forth and the deer you couldn't see out and the guy could actually get up close enough to, to dispatch him. Um, it was quite a, 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 again there was rules and regulations. Certain people had the right to hunt that could hunt and some that couldn't hunt. Um, there was promises made uh, in our way of life that we believe in, in the old times that we're all the same. The deer bear, whatever, they're all relations. So when you go to kill an animal, we, uh, we let them know why. Uh, we explain to them why we're taking them, why they're going. It's like if it's for a, a funeral or some kind of a birthday or something like that. It's, to us, it's, uh, how to say, it's like we're taking one of our own. It's not like we don't go hunting for sport. It's uh, all culture related. That's for, for all the animals. Um, there was bear, cougar. Uh, gold was really important. One of the other ones really important to me because it, it clothed us. It, it gave us a uh, material. They used to go up in the springtime to get the wool off the trees where the animals would shed and stuff. And also they get the meat, the capes, the horns were used for utensils. Just about all the animals would be used. But it was a, uh, it was quite a deal of doings going up there. Uh, again, there was proper things to do to go get them. You had to have the rights to go do it. Proper way of doing things, so a lot of rules. Yeah, they're fat. The the fur, the fat, the meat is that eight. Um, we use their fat for a lot of different things, uh, the bones. Again, they would be completely used up. Uh, I don't know if they really hunted bears. They trapped them, or how they had deadfalls and stuff to get them, but... Their meat's good. Don't taste like chicken, though. <laughs> Ducks. Geese, swans, blue herrings, eagles. Uh, I don't know about the small ones, uh, chickadees or crows or robins. I don't know. I've never heard anything about that. I know the doves and the grouse. Uh, I think that's about that I know about the birds. Brants and stuff out there in the salt water.
it's still important. Uh, it's kind of indifferent important. It's getting in touch with ourselves. We go hunting. It's again, we have certain things we got must do before we go hunting. But yet, it's being up there in the mountains alone with nature. Uh, it's harder. The moment is different. Uh, there's a lot of. It's hard to hunt nowadays because of the white man's rules and regulations. They're trying to impose on us. And uh, we don't feel they have the right to impose those rules because we reserved that right to hunt. We reserved it. Nobody gave it to us. We saved that. We saved it for ourselves, that part of it. But it hasn't been really I call, adjudicated, proven to the white man that we have that right. It's sad. And that, that affects us when we go hunting. Because uh, sometimes the game warden stops and takes our meat away from us. And then he wants to give it back. And that's not right. And, but we still use it mainly for gatherings, funerals, uh, ceremonies, whatever. We, we hunt, but we don't have so much the, the hunters, the, it's called the, the head hunters and stuff like that anymore. It's, it's mainly anybody goes hunting that's asked. You will be asked to go hunt when you go hunt. Uh, they used it for gafting, uh, spearing. Or pinning them, we're going to call it, where they had a fork on the thing, then you get them from behind and more or less pin them right to the gravel and you grab them out of there then. Uh, setting the nets. Um, we had nets that were made out of uh, the sticking net off the string that you make out of the sticking out of nets like that. And, and to monitor our weirs, our traps and stuff, they were used for that. They They'd uh, use the, the canoe, would, they'd travel up to uh, one place Grandpa and my dad they talked about when they were younger. Uh, in the fall, they would head up the South Fork, up past um, the Skookum Creek, I guess, up in that area. Mm -hmm. That's where they get the, the spring salmon. They lost a lot of their, their body fat and stuff, and they're good for drying or smoking. They'd pull all the way up the river. There'd be a family or more, a couple of families going up and doing it. They'd bring it back down and they'd trade and share with people. But something that we don't get to enjoy it would be fun to be able to pull all the way up there and do that, and spend a couple of weeks up there fishing. We can drive up there now, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what we used it, also out in the salt chuck, we used them out there for, uh, they use it for gathering um, octopus, uh, urchins, whatever they can do with long poles, they pin them there, they probe them with a, with a little um, barbs and in into it. The octopus would grab a hold of them and pull it back up. Then they had these little, uh, floats that they put at the end of the pole and push it way down next to the bottom and then pop it loose and that thing would turn around and come up and it would spin on the way up. Huh. And sometimes the bottom fish would follow it all the way up to the surface where they'd either club it or scare it or gaff it. Uh, Grandpa used to talk about that as a kid up there in the islands and stuff. Uh, there is, we had trails, networks of trails. Um, I don't know if you ever heard this, um, anything at all, like uh, called Salish runners. Salish, they, they, these, these were younger people that traveled. That's all they did, they traveled. They were like, they, they travel and then they, they bring news and stuff. And there was a trail that ran from Linden right through here. And it went down 
all the way down to the river here was a crossing right there too but there was a down below us right next to the river is an old uh, longhouse old building down here and then that trail would go over here there's a trail that traveled up the north fork across over to Silver Lake to Cultus Lake and we travel you know it's would it be uncommon for the young people to go <coughs> for three, four, five weeks just traveling? Mm -hmm. uh, in their young days, they'd, they wouldn't just sit around. They'd go travel and visit and trade. And, and a whole group of people would go over there and, and help with, you know, we get the sturgeon up there out of the Sumas mm -hmm. and out of the Fraser and the hooligans. And, there was quite a trade going back and forth. I don't know, I've heard stories about the other side. Uh, again, Grandpa, he was a younger kid, you know, he heard stories about them traveling up through Cascade Pass. Yep. I forget the name of it, they call that, but that's where they would go up through there. And mm -hmm. then that's where they'd... Uh, Yeah, it's, uh, well, like everybody knows, uh, our ancestors didn't come over on the Mayflower. Uh, we was here to welcome. We was here to welcome people. We share what we have. Now we're sharing our history, our culture with you. You know, as a third grader, you're beginning your life to... Now, look at us with open minds. Learn from us. You know, know why we're here. Why we can do different things. Why we have different rights. It's uh, we're human beings. We're from a different world. And it so happens this world is ours, and you come from a different place. But yet you're here. We're here. We need to get together and work together. But our culture is part of your history now. Uh, our language, which is belongs right here, is ours, is yours, you can learn it. Uh, our way of life. It's, it's good to learn.